Okay, so now let's go back to our cape animation. And we are going to be extending this with a constraint of our own. So to begin, I actually want to reposition these. I want them to be positioned in a bit more three dimensional manner. So if um, imagine here is a shoulder and here is a shoulder. And then we're going to hit B and we're going to create a couple of additional bones. So I want some not from there. I want a new root bone. And in the middle, we're going to define some bones. And now what I want to do, I'm going to select both of these. I'm actually going to select all of them. And you can see that there is this bone size attribute in the inspector. And that is a purely visual. This will just make the bones appear to be smaller. It doesn't change anything for the animation. This is just so that um, it doesn't get in the, the way of our, our view area or the vector shape, basically. And then what we're going to do, we are going to select this one. We are going to add a constraint. And that constraint will be a rotation constraint. And if we select the rotation constraint, we can add a source. And the source will be this one over here. And then same, we're going to add a rotation constraint. And the source will be this one over here. Now, if we go to animate, you can see that this, um, uh, this bone follows this bone's rotation and same for these two. So as this one goes up, that one goes up as well. Now, what we want is we want this one to be slightly up when it goes down exactly like this. And we want it to be slightly down when it's up like this because we are going to be creating an additional vertex over here just to make the like make sure that there's a little bit of a um a contour to the end of this cape so that it doesn't look like a piece of cardboard flapping in the wind so let's go to design and we are going to be adding another vertex so we're going to hit v for the pen tool and then adding the vertex over here and we are going to hit T for translate and select it. And we're going to make it mirrored because I want it to be a smooth um, rotation or a smooth contour. And then we are going to hit escape, select the path. And then you can see we have all the bones, but we don't have these bones configured yet. As you can see, these are highlighted. So we're going to say plus bones, and then we're just going to make sure to select all of them. You don't select all of them, you will lose the weights that you've already assigned. So we're going to say done and then go back to Cape, hit enter. And now you can see that we can assign the weight for this as well. So I, I just hit W for edit weight. And both of these, um, let's hit T for translate. Both of these, I want them to have the exact same weight. So we're going to set them to be equal to the pink one. So I want them to follow, uh, not the pink one, sorry. I want it to follow this over here. And how do I do that? I assume it's this one. Oh, uh, sorry, I said it to be the white one. We want it to be the pink one. Okay, perfect. So this one will follow that point exactly now. And we will have like a slight little bend. So let's hit escape and go to animate. And then see what this looks like. Okay, we're beginning to get an effect. As you can see over here, it's way too much of a, a difference. And here it's far too, it's not enough. So we're going to select the root bone, hit T for translate and just move this down maybe out of the way a bit. And then go to animate. And uh, that is not what I want. Maybe we can bring it in more like this. Animate. Okay, at this point, I have been stuck in this loop in the past. Um, I would need to modify these vertices slightly. So I'm not gonna waste your time doing that. This is essentially at the point where it just needs to be played with and tweaked with in such a way that you can feel that, yeah, this is a natural movement. Yeah, it's the correct position. Yeah, the weights are fine. So I will be recording and depending on how long I take, 
I might fast forward, um, but yeah, once it's at a position that it's ready, I'll walk you through what I did. So catch you in a minute. Okay, just as a quick catch up, um, what I've done so far is I just went to the vertices and I brought all of them in a little bit. So I made sure that the vertices were very close to the bones. And then I uh, selected all of the vertices and I just made them mirrored. Okay, so just to make sure that there's a smooth motion always because detached at times uh, you can you can get like a motion that's like this, uh, very jaggedy. So I don't want that. I want it to be mirrored to make sure that it's always continuously smooth as this is cloth that we're animating. Um, well, I keep saying cloth. I don't know. I don't even, even know what a cape is made of, but it's a... Uh, it's the same effect, I guess. Um, so let's, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. Sorry for the mumbling. I'll get back to you once I'm done with the next portion. <laughs> okay, so I've played around with a couple of things. I'm quickly gonna run you through what I did and then I'm gonna show you the real piece of magic, the piece that will bring all of this um, together. Because currently there is something off and I realized what that was now. So, um, what I did is if we jump back to design and we go to edit vertices. I just made sure that all of the vertices were very close to the joints, as I mentioned, same for this one. And, um, that is all I did. I didn't change anything else. And then for the actual bones, um, for the constraints, you can see that the constraints have a strength option. So by 0 0.8, this would follow the rotation of this bone by 80%. Um, so it won't be as um, precise or exactly the same rotation. And then next, I went back to animate mode. And then I simply um, just increased and exaggerated the animation. So for each of these bones, I selected them, hit R for rotate, and just rotated them down a little bit. And I did this for each of the keyframes where the bones are actually animating. So I'm going to undo that. I don't want that. And then... Um, let me show you what the animation is at the current state. So now with the exaggerated movement, it's way easier to see that we have like this little bit of a distinction in the cloth or in the cape. And as it reaches like that, you can see that it, it's, it's, it's like semi like there's wind below it. So that's pushing this middle piece up and you can kind of more define where the corners are because of this movement. Um, obviously we can play with this until we are blue, but the real piece of magic that I want to show you now is the fact that we have this problem between this position, the start, and to the first keyframe for um, bone two and bone three, we have this problem where we don't have any movement. If you pay attention to bone three, it doesn't do any rotation until it gets to its keyframe. So this is essentially dead weight or lifeless animation, lifeless movement up until this point. And the same for the um, end over here with this keyframe over here until the very end, nothing happens. And same for this bone. As you can see at the end, it doesn't do any movement. It's just completely stiff. So imagine this is the corner or uh, keep your focus on this part over here. You can see that throughout the animation that is moving, it's fluid. And then it reaches the end and it's suddenly stiff for a couple of frames. And that is obviously not natural. So we want to find a way that we can make this animation not have any um, locations where it's stopped in motion. So there's a couple of, there's two ways um, that I know you can do it. You can either key in all of the animations at the start and key in all of the animations where it should be at this point, at the end, and then cut off what you don't need. And then play around with the cubic interpolation to get exactly what you want. Okay, so what we will do is we are gonna end the animation over here because this is the starting point of the animation where the root bone or this bone or bone number one, bone top one and um, bone bottom one, where they start, start moving. So we want, as this is the start, we want it to be the end as well. So we want to cut off all of these animations behind it. So we're gonna drag in our work area and then let's just hit play. Now you can see that there's this jaggery movement because we're cutting off all of these animations. However, all of these keyframes over here, these 
two, four, six ones, actually just two, four, these four keyframes over here are duplicates of these four. So we need to basically find the point in time that it needs to interpolate from this value, or we need to find the value that it needs to be at this point, and then interpolate it from here to the end. And we need to make sure that we keyframe a value over here so that this interpolation happens from here to that keyframe. So we're gonna drag it over here and um, or at least till the very end, let's zoom in a bit. And this is at one second. And we are gonna select the um, bone top two. Um, well, let's deselect everything, select bone top two. And then we are gonna press, press shift R. And what that will do is that will keyframe the current animation or the, the current rotation, sorry. And then I want to do the same for the bone top three, shift R. And then the same for these two. So I'm gonna select both of them and hit shift R. Okay, now the idea is that we can get rid of these animations. And we can go back over here and let's hit play. Now I can see we still have a jaggedy movement. So what we want is we want to select both of these, copy them, paste them over there, and then do the same for these two, and paste them over there, and let's hit play. Now, it's not perfect yet. We can still play around with the key interpolation. Currently, it's set to linear. So for these ones, there's nothing we can do. We can set them um, to, to non-linear, but um, because anything after this, it doesn't matter what the interpolation is for these keys, because we don't have any keyframes uh, behind these keys. So let's select this one. And for this, I don't want it to ease out because if it eases out over here, it means the animation slows down. But technically the animation is supposed to continue until the very end. It's supposed to continue until we get um, reach this keyframe over here. So I'm gonna select both of these and make this a easy in, but not an easy out. And then the exact same for these two. And then we're gonna go to these two, which is currently set to linear, and we're gonna make them cu cubic. And not an easy in, but we do want an easy out because it's gonna be an easy out at the very start. And then it's, it's gonna slow out and then speed up as it, as it goes up from here to this keyframe. So same for these two. Easy out and speed in. So let's see what that looks like. Cool, we actually get a little bit of a flick. So we can actually hide the bones. And there you can see we have a pretty decent cloth dynamic. I might change this and if I do, I will let you know. Uh, I might just drag it around a little bit and play around, but this is essentially the essence. I think you get the main idea of how you can do an animation. And like I said, it's a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of playing around. This is by no means perfect. Um, you would normally play around for a long time to get something um, looking remotely good. But yeah, I do hope you learned something in this video.